What's going on YouTube? This is Marcus back for another review. This is going to be my review for The Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 9 Episode 1. Um, let me just say this before I start over. I think the episode was kind of slow for a, for a premiere. It wasn't um, really like a bunch anything exciting that happened. Um, but of course, you know, the shade was there. And, you know, of course, that's where we get the title from House of Shade and Dust. So, um, I think I'm going to go by character. Um, so let's see. I'm going to start off with Candy. Um, basically, no, I'm not. I'm going to go by what my notes say so I can make sure that I try to touch on everything. So, um, Candy and Todd are potty trying to potty train Ace. Um, and I'm just like, now, how old do our, do our babies, like, what's the age that you start potty training? Because I, I don't think, the ba he's not even like five months or something. It, well, on the show, I think he was like five months. I was just like, ain't that too young to be trying to potty train a, a child? I mean, I guess every parent does it how they want to do it. I'm just like, I thought that like five months, that's a little bit too young. Like, he can't even sit up on his own, but you trying to have him, let him teach him how to, girl... Anyway, um, and, you know, of course, obviously, there are some things that Tide, you know, he has, you know, doesn't know how to do or has to learn. Because, of course, even though he had already has a daughter, I don't think he was, like, around during those parts of Kayla's life, you know, when she was a baby. Because he don't know how to fix a bottle and make formula and things of that nature. Um, and so, we get over to, this is when we go to Kenya's house. And, you know, she's still trying to... Um, you know, still working on getting her house together. Um, I was confused because I was like, now, wh what happened to the bed? Because I remember last season they bet that whoever house, um, they was trying to make a bet to see who could finish their house before Christmas. But it's like at way past Christmas at this particular point in time. Y'all still working on y'all's house? And then I'm sitting here like, why... Kenya, now, when she talked to the, the contractor guy, he pretty much told her because she was like, girl, I'm having a housewarming party in two weeks. And he was like, well, we're going to try to get it done, but there ain't no guarantee that everything's going to get done. And so I'm just like, why you didn't wait to after the house was finished in its entirety before you decide you want to have a housewarming party? And 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 not only that, why, why I'm trying to figure out, Sheree and Kenya, why are they so concerned about what the other person is going to think about their house? Because even in the scene, it was a scene where Kenya was talking to I guess her, it was, she was talking to somebody and she was like, girl, I can't believe I'm so far behind and I got to have this housewoman party and the last thing I need is for Sheree to come in here pointing stuff out. Like, who cares what Sheree thinks? Like, get your house finished and 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 and, and, and move on. Like, is, 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 did Sheree give you some money to help get your house together? Like, I'm confused what's going on. Like, why you so concerned about what other people are thinking? They ain't the ones that got, got to live in this house. You do. What I will say is... You know, from because I've seen the finished product of both houses, and I think both houses are very nice. I I think from the outside, I prefer Sheree's house. But then when you actually go inside and see everything, I think I can, I think I prefer Kenya's house. Um, but yeah, so um, you know, of course, you know Matt, uh, Kenya, and her uh boyfriend or ex or whatever they are, um. Or they're kind of like on a timeout, I guess you can say, after he went crazy when he thought she was cheating on him because he went and was in her phone and went through her text messages and he went crazy. So they kind of like on a timeout. They haven't seen each other for weeks. So then we go over to uh, Chateau Charest. And um, her house is actually going to be ready within six weeks. Now, she didn't say anything about having a house on the party. So... I don't really know, um, you know, if if that's going to happen. But I like, you know, her, like I said, the outside of her house. Um, now, it kind of makes me wonder, did she build this house for, pub, like, for, for pub, publicity? Because it's like, you know, her house was kind of like just there. It was like nothing was going on. There were no renovations or whatever. 
when she wasn't on the show, but now all of a sudden that she's back on the show, now all of a sudden she's getting the house together and doing all this and wah, wah, wah. Um, so I don't know. Um, it wasn't, we didn't really, we didn't really get much in that scene anyway. Um, I'm not understanding why that dude, her, the, the, the interior decorator wants to, why his name is pronounced Michelle. I thought it was Michael. But anyway, so we get the scene where uh, Phaedra is, you know, at home and she's, you know, still getting used to being quote unquote kind of technically single. And I, was, I said, girl, you need to stop playing. Tell me why. When they showed the lady, I guess she's supposed to be like the nanny, but under her name it said Lisa, and then it said Phaedra's governess. I said, now you need to stop playing, girl. Daddy, she she's a nanny. Um, and so Portia comes over with some little toys for the boys. You know, they kind of having some little chit chat about what's going on about her being divorced, and they make jokes about, okay, we gonna go to the club and turn up and wop wop wop. And so, you know, she asked Phaedra. You know, is she ready to date? And she was like, well, I really want to. At right, this time, I'm just taking my time, you know, taking things slow because technically I am still a married woman. I want to make sure that I'm fully divorced first before I get, you know, in a relationship. And then not only that, you know, I want somebody who is going to be able to uh, wrap their mind around or accept the fact that I do have two sons. And, you know, not they're not only going to have to love me, but they're going to have to love them as well. Um, and so in the midst of this, this guy is on like on a horse and carriage and he comes up to the door and was like, girl, I got a delivery for Phaedra Parks. Turns out it was an invitation to Kenya's house home party. And she was like, you know, you can uh, bring a plus one, but they must be hot and out of thought. And I kind of feel like she was throwing shade at Portia because she knows that her and Portia are both are like, you know, uh, click buddies. I kind of think that she kind of assumed that Phaedra was probably going to announce, not announce, that Phaedra was probably going to invite Portia anyway. So I think that's why she threw that plug in there. And I kind of think they both knew that. So that's why they did what they did and, and Portia came anyway. Um, so we get a scene where Cynthia meets with a divorce lawyer to kind of iron, iron out, you know, the, uh, the divorce or whatever with Peter. Um, and you know, and it's a sad situation when, it, you know, it's as it pertains to her marriage, because it's like, not only like we get, we saw her marriage kind of somewhat fall apart on the show, but she also, but we, and then we also seen her got, get married because she's the only, as far as I can remember, she's the only cast member on this show that actually got married on the show. Uh, you know, the other women that, you know, got married or whatever, they had like a spinoff special or, you know, like a side, like Nene and... Uh, Candy, but with Cynthia, she actually got married on the Housewives of Atlanta. So, like, we've seen her marriage kind of come together and everything merge, and now we've seen everything kind of separate and fall apart. So, it's a sad situation. Um, basically, the lawyer was basically like, "Girl, I need you to get everything, you know, you know, with the prenup," because she was like, "I don't want no money from him. I just want to keep the house." But I'm just like, if the house is in your name, like, how can he get the house? But he was like, girl, I need you to bring that prenup and bring written documentation of everything that's included in the prenup so we can make sure he don't try to get none of your cookies and your stuff, okay? So we get to a scene where she uh, FaceTimes Peter basically like, girl, um, you know, I need a copy of the prenup so I can make sure that you don't try to take none from me when we actually get divorced and I can't find mine. So do you know, do you have a copy or do you know where it is? He was like, girl... I'm with my girlfriend. She was like, you know, that ain't funny. Like, girl, you got... Which it won't funny because I'm like, you already got this stuff out against you about being uh, an adulterer, stepping out on your wife and you making jokes about your new girlfriend. So then he go into this whole spill about, girl, I love you and I want to I wanna make this work and what, what, what. And after a while, she was just like, girl, I got to go. Like, because it seems like he always, to me, has seemed like the type that would like to try to get in her head. And I think he knows that about himself. And I think she knows that about him. That's why she cut the conversation so short. Because I kind of feel like if he, if she ever lets down her guard enough to where he can get inside her head, she'll turn around and be like, you know, never mind. I don't want no divorce. We can just try to work this out. Um. So we get to a scene where... Um, Portia goes to see an anger management counselor basically talking about, you know, her anger issues. And she was talking about how, you know, there's been instances where she's been, you know, in a place with, you know, 
certain women where things have turned physical and the the therapist was like well where is all this coming from like what happened in your past to make you so bitter and so angry so then she goes back in the past to where she was talking about how she was picked on as a child because she had big teeth and big eyes but in the um what was it? your eyes are still big now but anyway but i was like in the picture her eyes didn't look that big and her teeth didn't look that big so i don't know what they were picking on but she was basically like she was kind of like an outcast and her brother was like the popular one and so, you know, she was basically saying that, you know, it had gotten so bad to the point where she wanted, oh, excuse me, where she wanted to commit suicide. And the doctor was like, girl, okay, so like, what, what was your part in this? Because you, everything that you're saying is basically you trying to, it's like you trying to put it off on somebody else. Like, it's because of this, the reason that I am where I am. Like, when are you going to start taking responsibility for your actions? Because regardless of where you come from, what you've been through, what the action that you take and the thing that you say is 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 because of you you can't blame it on nothing or nobody else but yourself but it does seem like she's kind of taking responsibility for what she's done and what she said and she's kind of like you know i accept my part in this you know because even with the thing with you know portia and Ken with uh kenya and with cynthia I, you know she was able to accept her part and say well you know i did this and i know i was wrong and wow 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 um so now we get to are we at the house party yet? Oh yeah, she had, she was saying that she had to call Sheree on the phone because she was like, girl, I don't know where you live at. But then I'm confused because you said that it, you when you rolled by there, it was a bunch of paper and stuff on the wall. And Shafra was like, "Yeah, girl, to keep nosy heifers like you up out of my house because you ain't gonna see what it looked like on the inside till it's finished." And um, so then you know it was this, it was an invite, but it was kind of shady. And so, but you know, she decides she gonna come. So Cynthia gets there first, and when she get there, like they still, I'm sitting there like, girl, it's like an hour or so before the party. You still got people in here uncovering furniture. And knocking stuff, knocking walls in and hanging up pictures. Like, girl, you need to get this stuff together. So they, you know, in the midst of this, they go upstairs and, you know, uh, Kenya had got some flowers from her, from Matt. And, you know, so she goes into this whole spiel about it's kind of, you know, kind of like a bittersweet moment because, you know, Matt was kind of played an intricate part in helping her get the house together. But because of everything that's going on, you know, he's not going to be there or so we think. And so eventually Cynthia was like, girl, well, I'm going to go downstairs and entertain your guests while you finish getting yourself together. So everybody else comes in. Sheree comes in first. Um, you know, she had got to the point where she was like, girl, I got to take my heels off and put on my flat so I don't mess around and fall because Kenya can't afford to pay my hospital bills. OK. Um, let me see. And so when Kenya and Sheree greet each other, Kenya goes right into a girl. Like, I'm so glad that it didn't take me five years to build this house. And Sheree was like, what? She was like, um, technically, um, boo, I got, I started building my house in 2012. So it's only been four years. Okay. And so <laughs> Sheree said, well, girl, which that was a lie. And, you know, you can tell she was being shady because she was like, girl, my whole, this whole house is about the size of my master bedroom. And Sheree was, I mean, Kenya was like, girl. If you're going to be trying to throw rocks at my house, make sure you inside your house. Like, girl, when we going to see what your house look like while you over here talking junk about my house? But I'm <clears throat> but I'm like, well, at least Sheree had enough common sense to wait until her house was finished before she started inviting people over to see the house. So, you know, she was asking everybody that was invited. She was like, I invited Candy. I invited Nene, but she's in Miami and I invited Phaedra. And, of course, that was a shocker to Sheree because, of course, you know, Kenya and Phaedra, even though I think they, sometimes they can be cool and sometimes they be at odds. And so she was like, well, did you invite Portia? She was like, girl, no, because the last time we were together, she chased somebody out in the parking lot. Like, I just want to be safe. You know, I don't want my house to get towed up because we know how Portia, when she get upset, she can set it off. So, of course, you know, when Candy shows up and whoever the chick was, I don't know who she is. But, you know, and she gives them, basically take them up to the master bedroom, like, girl, this is what my house looks like, and wah, 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 wah. And the whole time, Sheree's just throwing shade, like, girl, she need to get this fixed, she need to get this fixed. 
<clears throat> and I was just sitting here thinking, like, girl, why you had them dogs sitting in that little bitty bag? They look like they was about to suffocate up in there. Like, girl, they might be claustrophobic. But anyway, and so, um, you know, Kenya pulls Candy to the side and was like, well, let me talk to you for a minute. But then we, we didn't really see the conversation or hear the conversation in this instance. So when Cynthia, side note, Bravo, uh, VH1, y'all be doing a real good job of filling in space because y'all know dang well, Kenya didn't know not now I'm bitter than white people that was up in her house. Um, but anyway, so, you know, when Sheree and Cynthia were sitting around just kind of entertaining everybody and that's when Portia and Phaedra show up and Sheree was just like, ooh, I want to see what's going to happen because, you know, mind you, Kenya had just said she didn't invite, um, Portia to the house. But I kind of feel like, well, you should have specified that you didn't want Portia to come when you sent Phaedra the invite because you should have known she was going to invite Phaedra. Um, and so the episode ends where basically Kenya is coming downstairs and, and she sees Portia. Um, so I'm interested to see what happens next week because I saw this in the previews where Kenya told Portia, like, girl, let me holler at you. Come and talk to me outside. But anyway... <clears throat> That's all I got. It is hot in this bathroom, but that's all I got. Thank you all for watching, tuning in. Uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Um, shout out. I, I can't do shout outs because there's so many people. Pretty much everybody that I watch on a regular basis is reviewing this show. So check them out. Um, but anyway, y'all, I will see y'all probably either tomorrow or Saturday for American Horror Story and How to Get Away with Murder. I'm trying to... <laughs> I be trying to get my videos out in a timely manner, but they don't always work out. But look, I'm working on it. But anyway, I will see y'all in the next video. Peace.